What is the most hurtful thing a medical professional has ever said to you? Doctor. Glances at my genitals. Eh, you have her. Uh, but I've never banged. Oh, stop crying. I diagnose this all the time. It's pretty common. But aren't you gonna at least do a test? Fine, but it's gonna hurt and it's gonna show her. Indeed, it was an allergic reaction to a medication. Story 2. I had to take my son to the ER when he was two because he was having trouble breathing. The ER doc said that he most likely had asthma, so he gave us an inhaler. Fast forward three days when we go to have his follow-up with his pediatrician. Dr. Jerk. So, he saw this ER doc once in his life and you trusted her to make a lifelong determination that your son has asthma? That's pretty ridiculous. Six months later, after three more ER visits with my son being unable to breathe. Dr. Jerk. It looks like I owe you an apology. It turns out your son quite likely does have asthma. Story 3. Came in for something totally different and she commented on my stretch marks on my hips and around my breast. I was around 17 years old and had gotten them when I hit puberty because I developed so much in a short amount of time. I explained this to her and she had a whole dialogue with herself about her originally thinking it would have been because I used to be fat. And after my explanation, just the lamenting about how sad it was for me that I would have to live my entire life with a body like that. Changed doctor the next day. Blows my mind how a doctor who sees many different bodies every day can be this insanely insensitive. Like why? It's almost like they went out of their way to be hurtful. That sucks. Story 4. Three months-ish pregnant. Start spotting. Spend about 10 hours at the hospital, ultrasounds, lots of diagnostic testing. Nothing they can do. Tell me to go home and wait to miscarry. I'm a wreck. It's late, dark, and rainy outside. But I don't have a way to get home because hubby is at work with our only car, who is very young and poor. Doc says the nurses have taxi vouchers they can give me to get home. Go to nurse's station, ask for a taxi voucher. Nurse says, We only give taxi vouchers to women who have living babies. Surely, surely they did not say that. There's overstepping, and there's whatever the hell this is. I'll tell you what you do. I don't have to work in a hospital. I don't have to know anything. What you do here is you give the woman a damn taxi voucher. What in the world? Story 5. I woke up in the hospital and heard a nurse running out saying, He's awake! The doctor comes into the room and tells me to move my toes. I ask them where I am and what's going on. He just gets more insistent that I move my toes. I asked again where I was and what was going on. Then he almost yells at me to move my toes. I said I am moving my toes. And immediately he says, you will never walk again. That's how I found out I was paraplegic at 21 years old. I had been in a single car wreck and was thrown 70 to 80 feet from the car and my vertebrae was dislocated and laying next to another one. I don't remember the car wreck, but that exchange with the doctor is burned into my brain and that was 31 years ago. Edit. Thank you for all your comments. I had a seatbelt on, but went off a small hill next to the interstate after clipping an end of a guardrail. Flipped the car down the hill and seat and seatbelt gave way under the pressure and I went out the driver door window. My back collapsed around the door sill and dislocated one vertebra next to the one below it. I'm a big guy, 6'4 and 235 at the time, and the force was too much for the seat structure. I found out all these details over the next few weeks while I was in rehab. Whew, yeah, the doctor didn't have very great bedside manner it sounds like. Although, strictly doing his job, I can see why this would hurt. Not a, uh, thrilling announcement for your life, huh? Story 6. The suggestion that I had confused a panic attack for a seizure. To clarify, this was my first grand mal seizure. My father had them prior, and my mother witnessed both him having one and myself having mine. According to her, it was identical. I even hit all of the textbook marks of having an epileptic seizure, from the memory loss to the postictal fatigue. The emergency room doctor didn't run any tests or examine my family history of epilepsy. He simply noticed the anxiety disorder in my medical history and assured me I was just having a panic attack, and wrote it off as my only issue being that I'd hit my head. Talking to my psychiatrist later about the incident, he confirmed based only on my account, corroborated with my mom's details where I couldn't fill in, that I had definitely had a seizure, and he sent orders in for the further testing himself. He also couldn't refrain from saying, what the hell is wrong with this doctor? I'm glad that at least one of my doctors took me seriously. Story 7. My doctor didn't actually speak. His reaction, though, was worth a thousand words. He literally rolled his eyes, threw his head back, and sighed very loudly. I'd been having a semi-regular pain in my abdomen for years, a terrible cramping pain. I'm a man, so it wasn't menstrual in nature. It would double me over in pain and would last for a day or two and then go away. I had seen a few different doctors about it and none of them could figure it out. I was seeing a gastroenterologist about another problem and mentioned my pain to him. He did some tests, tried a few things, did an endoscopy, and told me he couldn't find anything wrong. 
The next time I got the cramping pains, I went back to him and he performed his nonverbal routine mentioned above. It would have been less hurtful if he just told me I was a hypochondriac. I gave up on trying to figure out the pain. Fast forward a few years and I'm having a bout of these cramps. Middle of the night, I get up to go to the bathroom. I puke my guts out and proceed to pass out on the bathroom floor for a few seconds. I make it back to bed without waking my wife and somehow fall back asleep. In the morning, I get up and need to puke again. My wife goes with me out of concern and I pass out on the toilet. She calls 911 and I get whisked away to the hospital. Didn't take too long for the doctors to determine I had a bowel obstruction. After six hours of surgery and a subsequent week stay in the hospital, I'm back home and feeling better than I have in years. Turns out that I had a 99% bowel obstruction caused by adhesions that had slowly been developing on my intestines since an appendectomy that I had in 1980. The surgeon told me that it was so bad in a few places that my intestines had been twisted on themselves. He referred to it as a rat's nest. The surgery was in March 2017. And not only have the cramps not come back once, I haven't felt this great in decades. What is it with abdominal pain and doctors dismissing it? This seems insanely common, especially for women, but hey, clearly in the case of a man too. They just didn't take him seriously and they could have fixed it so much earlier. Opie had to live with debilitating cramps for years. Sometimes doctors just really miss the mark, man. Story 8. Indian female here. I can't go to most gynecologists here because they are so judgmental. The last visit I had was brutal. I was shamed for losing my virginity before marriage and then given an extremely painful ultrasound. When I yelled out in pain, she said, But you are used to things inside of you. Shook me to my core. Can't summon enough courage to visit a gynecologist anymore now. Look, I get cultural differences. But I do believe there are some fields that should be unaffected by culture and should more just strictly be objective. Medicine? Has gotta be one of those, man. Story 9. Wasn't said to me, but someone I knew. I work at a hospital and so does my mother. We had a 43-year-old woman who had a very rare form of cancer that spread incredibly fast to just about everywhere in her body. From diagnosis to death was about 12 weeks. The medications and therapies and general lack of mobility caused her to become swollen and obese. She was a terribly sweet lady. They took her down to radiology for a scan and the technician made a bunch of really mean comments about her weight because she was too large for our machines. So they had to arrange for a transfer to another hospital for her scans and then have her transferred back. The technician thought that because she was dying and sick that she was deaf and didn't understand English any longer. And so while they were alone, she made so many mean comments. She waited until she was back in her room waiting for her transfer before she started crying. I'll never understand people who feel the need to make others feel less than or badly. Story 10. Not sure if psychiatrists count, but... You need to stop talking to me about your past. I have other patients who've had it worse than you, you know. I'd only been seeing this woman for two months. It had taken me years to work up the courage to seek help, because I had the fear that my problems weren't real problems or weren't important. We'd barely even touched on the trouble I came in wanting help for, because the doctor decided on week two that I had generalized anxiety disorder and that was that. Story 11. Not psychologically hurtful necessarily, but the most terrifying thing I've been told. We're going to have to defibrillate you, and we don't have time to sedate you. They rolled the crash cart with paddles into my room, and I said, get that thing the hell away from me, and almost cried. My mom was in the room with me and was absolutely hysterical. Thankfully, a cardiologist was able to look at my EKG in the nick of time and determined my heart rhythm was stable enough for me to just be transferred to a room for further evaluation without defibrillation. Story 12. Saw my local doctor about my mental health, which took a turn for the worse after I was assaulted in the street. He then goes into a lecture about how I perceive things, to the point where I have to remind him that I was assaulted for no other reason than the guy was bored and showing off to his friend. The doctor then berated me because, you're thinking of the assault in a negative way. I'm sorry, I didn't realize there was a positive to having a visible wound on my face. Story 13. Me, when I was nine, about to undergo anesthesia for the first time ever for oral surgery and being extremely scared. Nurse, you need to grow up. I've had kids half your age and not be as much a scaredy cat as you. My mother was not by any means a helicopter parent, ooh, but the thrashing she gave that nurse, the other nurse who chuckled at it, and the doctor who came in was insane. And then she took me out of that office, the surgery wasn't time sensitive, and took me for ice cream. I had the surgery done at a different office with a staff that had far better bedside manners. Story 14. To my wife, about eight weeks pregnant at the oncologist's office after an ONGYN saw a polyp she wanted someone to look at. Doctor. You need to have a hysterectomy immediately. Us. Shouldn't we wait till the biopsy results come back? No, in my opinion, if you want to live, you need to have a hysterectomy immediately. Turns out, it was benign. 
Discoloration is normal for Pacific Islanders during pregnancy. Jerk got results from biopsy the next day, and we weren't told them until the following week. Story 15. I just don't know how you could be in so much pain being so young. I'm not going to be able to write you a prescription. My response was, you're an idiot. I came in because I was hurt at work doing heavy construction. I never asked for a prescription in the first place. I had assumed I was vetting an x-ray to see if I had anything broken. Story 16. After years of fertility treatments, we finally got the wife knocked up. Just before the 12-week mark, they found... something. The something was anencephaly. Not knowing what it was, we kept asking doctors what this meant and got very doctory answers. The prognosis isn't good. Or, it presents significant challenges to the fetus. All of which made it sound bad, but somehow manageable. As we continued through the gamut of doctors, we eventually ended up with one who had that declarative Scandinavian accent. When we asked him, what does this mean for the child, he answered, This condition is incompatible with life. If it survives to birth, it will live only for days. It was at once soul-crushing and a relief. We finally knew how bad it was, but we knew what we had to do. The decision was no longer ours, and while it hurt, the clarity was welcome. Recalling this story many years later still makes me feel emotional. Between my lack of knowledge of what a Scandinavian accent really sounds like, and also the sensitivity of the topic, I decided to not. Sorry if you were looking forward to it. I thought about it for a while, but decided, eh, probably not a great idea. Story 17. I did a video chat service to talk to a doctor for 15 minutes. I told her my symptoms and thoughts since we were low on time. I had been very sick for weeks, possible urinary tract infection and respiratory infection. Also gave me other ideas from my symptoms. She told me I had valley fever and told me all about it over chat and we got cut off at 15 minutes. I got her final email, which should have a prescription in it, and was told she actually thought I had somatic symptom disorder, aka I was making this all up and I was perfectly fine. Her prescription was for a frickin' psychologist. She told me in detail about my possible valley fever even though I said I hadn't been to the areas, she said it was prevalent. I made an appointment with my normal doctor and had a few tests ran. Had a respiratory infection and a freaking kidney infection. Ten or so days of meds and I was fine. Gosh, I was so angry at that quack. Story 18. I had gained a lot of weight around my midsection a few years back and my periods stopped. I was scared, young, and thought I was pregnant, but the tests came back negative. I went to a doctor to have myself checked out, and she did some basic tests before telling me, There's nothing wrong with you. You're just fat. I already had some body confidence issues, but hearing it from my doctor when I was really trying hard to get in shape hurt. I worked hard to lose weight, but my belly wouldn't shrink. I was starting to feel really sick and went back to the doctor, who told me again it was just fat. I was crushed. A year later, I went to the hospital for something unrelated, and it was discovered that I had a giant ovarian cyst, about the size of a newborn. It was throwing off my hormones, making me gain weight, among other issues. I have since lost weight and I'm feeling super confident now, but that doctor really messed me up for a long time. Story 19. Was in a skiing accident when I was 16. For four years, I kept going to all these doctors because I was getting gradually worse joint and muscle pain. I would wake up at night crying sometimes. They all blew me off and said I wasn't stretching or exercising enough. I did dance four times a week and cardio on my off days. I'm pretty sure that wasn't it. At 20, my mom went with me to her rheumatologist in case I had arthritis, which runs in our family. Doctor gave me the diagnosis of fibromyalgia, so yay, no real cure. It'll probably be here my whole life and could probably get worse. For a good three years, every doctor I went to after that said the lovely, Uh, so they diagnosed with that, huh? Guess they didn't know what was wrong. Let's do another blood test. After I've had like 30 at this point. Or uh, the better one. You're too young for this pain. I think you might be over-exaggerating how much it actually hurts. It might just be a phase. Eventually, I started being a jerk back when doctors said stuff like that. 28 now, and guess what? Still have it. Story 20. My first time getting an exam with a gynecologist, I was very nervous. I had lost my virginity only a few months prior and was seeking birth control. Talking to the doctor, I was told I would be too absent-minded to take a pill every day, and I should get hormonal IUD instead. Due to my migraine headaches and my family history of blood clots, this was not a good option for me. But anyway, during the exam, the doctor attempted to insert the speculum and I was very tense, so it was uncomfortable. She said, You need to drink some wine to relax and bang more often to stretch out before I would even consider giving you an IUD. I've been used to the wimpy speculum. Needless to say, I never went back, and Planned Parenthood was a lifesaver. Story 21. From when I was in middle school until 10th grade, I would get violent nausea any time I got hungry. It felt like my stomach was on fire and I would miss a lot of school from feeling like crap. Although I was a good student and wasn't falling behind in any way. After a lot of fighting with my mother who accused me of exaggerating, she agrees to take me to a gastroenterologist to be checked out. Before agreeing to do an endoscopy, the gastro accused me of exaggerating because I was a teen girl, and apparently that's just what young women do. He suggested I was just making up these symptoms for attention, and then asked me point blank if I was lying about my pain level to skip school. 
and suggested I had a mental health issue I was covering for. I had frickin' GERD and severe acid reflux, as confirmed by the endoscopy he reluctantly agreed to perform on me. Instead of letting it go, the gastro made a point of angrily telling me that I had the stomach of an 80-year-old man, and must have been intentionally eating in a way to screw up my stomach. I have a family history of stomach problems in GERD. I don't understand why it was so implausible that my brother could have acid reflux at a young age, but I must be a hysterical liar when I claim I have the same symptoms in my teens. Wow, look at that. Another gastrointestinal issue written off by a doctor because it was a teen girl. Gross. I hate it. Story 22. Hadn't been able to eat in days. Throwing up, constipation for a week, and massive stomach pain. Finally, my girlfriend convinces me to go to the hospital. Get checked into the ER and taken to an examination room. My girlfriend comes with. Male doctor comes in, looks at my chart, and says he has to give me an anal examination. I was barely given time to say anything before his fingers are in my bum in front of my wide-eyed girlfriend. He then says, You have prostatitis. This can happen when you're active with multiple partners. And walks out. I've never cheated, and now had to explain that while being sick. Went and saw my PCP the next day, and turns out I had a stomach infection. That is very confidently wrong. What was that doctor thinking? Also, he totally has to ask before doing that? That's straight up just a violation. Yucky. Bad. No good. Story 23. Went to a gynecologist for a simple checkup, had no symptoms or anything. It was at my university hospital in New York. While she's peeking between my legs and there isn't anything wrong at all, she asks me about my personal situation. I tell her I have a boyfriend. Her reply, You sure he doesn't cheat on you? I mean, what the hell? Talk about asking someone a fun question when they're most vulnerable. If I had come several times with STDs and didn't know where from, then okay, maybe. But out of the blue, first time I met her, no issues, what was she thinking? Story 24. Going in for an update for my glasses prescription a year ago. The doctor had been our family optometrist for a long time and was friendly with my mother. Doctor. Are you on any medication? No. Well, just birth control. Doctor. Makes a disappointed face. Oh. OP, I didn't think you were like that. Or some stuff like how she didn't think I was that type of girl. Um, doctor, I'm married now. Doctor looks relieved. Oh, that's good. Congratulations. When are you having kids? Me. Uh, we're not sure if we want children. She moves on with the exam, finally, and as we're finishing up, she starts asking me about religion and if I go to church. I tell her no, I don't belong to a church and I don't go regularly. She then proceeded to say that she is grateful my husband and I are not having kids, because the child would not be raised in a Christian home. I was speechless. She then tells me how she has gotten suspended for preaching to her patients in the past, but she doesn't care. She'll keep doing it. I really wish I would have reported her, or at least stuck up for myself. I'm a woman and at the time was 25. So like, who cares if I was on birth control, even if I wasn't married? She's an absolute jerk for shaming me like that in a place I should feel safe. Oh, if only I could go back in time. Why would you become a gynecologist if you're so critical of people doing things you don't like? Because I'm going to tell you, as a gynecologist, and if you're like, I don't know, prudish for lack of a better word, you're going to meet people who do things you don't like. A lot of them. Like, I'm sorry OP is on birth control, doesn't want children, doesn't go to church. That's rough. Surprisingly though, it doesn't impact your life at all. So shut the hell up. Anyway, this was a frustrating thread, but that's all the stories we have for today. Medical professionals can just suck sometimes. I know this is a thread where all of the stories are going to be bad because that's what it asks for. But still, I hate it. Makes me real mad. But for now, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are. I will see you in the next one.